Hello. You can't see my face right now because I wanted to show off my dog. This is my favorite t-shirt and this is when Ragnar, my puppy, this is when he was three months old and he's four and a half years old now and I just love this picture and we have, my wife and I, we have a lot of pictures of Ragnar on our refrigerator but this is my favorite one and it's, it's not her favorite one. She thinks he looks super homely. So if you think he looks homely, you know, you're not going to offend me. You know, I hear that from my wife. But I just think he looks adorable in this picture. Uh, I like his mohawk, the scar on the nose. I didn't cause the scar, but he's got a little scar on the nose. He came like that. The scar's gone now. His floppy ears. I, I, I think he's and it just says, I, I think he's adorable. And I lo love this picture. I'm wearing this shirt out. I'm a... I'm a man that's 245 pounds, and my favorite picture, my, my favorite shirt to wear is a shirt that has a picture of my dog. So don't, don't judge me, okay? That's just, or go ahead and judge me if you want. I'm, I'm sticking with Ragnar, so my dog. One of the reasons why I started making videos about Chris Ann Kramers and Lissa Ann Froon, their case, is because it's been mishandled so much. And one of the things that irritates me the most is when people will make lists. They'll say, well, these are, this is a list of reasons why that support the loss theory. This is a list of reasons that support foul play. And because both of these lists have evidence, but we just have to back up and just say we don't know what happened. Because both of these could have happened because they both have evidence. Now, when I hear that, I just want to do a face plant. I, I, I just... But that's hogwash, okay? That is hogwash. There really aren't two lists that we can go by here because this is my hypothesis. There's things on this foul play list, evidence for foul play, that cannot be explained with the loss theory. I have videos on several of those things. However, there's nothing on the loss theory that can't be explained somehow in the foul play theory. There's nothing conclusive that is on the loss theory that you say, well, there's no, no reason to believe foul play because this happened. No, there's nothing like that. However, with the foul play, there's pretty clear-cut signs that foul play did happen in some of these. So it's, when I see people that try to make these two lists, I, I, I think it's a very bad idea. And my hypothesis, there's nothing on the loss theory that can't be explained with the foul play theory. On the other hand, there's things in the foul play theory that, you know, that, that can't be explained with the loss theory. So what do I mean? Okay, now for an example of the, the lists, I'm going to go no further than one of my video's comment sections. Now, a, a person who watched my video, one of my videos, and he, he loved to comment, his name is Ivan. Ivan, thank you for watching my video. Thank you for leaving a comment. Now, I'm not putting you under the bus in any way, okay? I'm using what you said as an illustration. And because it points out to what other YouTube creators, quite a few of them, try to do. I'm not putting you under the bus, Ivan, okay? Yeah, I like it when someone subscribes. I like it when someone leaves a like. But what I like the most is when someone leaves a comment. Because when someone leaves a comment, I think that's the best way to try to honor Lisa and Froon and Chris Kramers, because you're trying to advance the discussion, because we want justice. So, you know, that's that's what I'm going for, is trying to, you know, advance this conversation, and hopefully down the road, justice will happen. But let me get back to this list that Ivan, now Ivan, the only reason I'm, I'm using this is because this represents what a lot of YouTube creators will do. They'll say, well, this supports abduction, or foul play, this supports the loss theory, and because we have both these lists that support different things, we can't make a conclusion. And my, you know, we, we had to just say we don't know. And I just think, as I said before, that's hogwash. We can say we know because there's nothing on that loss theory that can't be explained with the foul play. Now, what I'm about to go over is Ivan's list, and you can see Ivan's list on, you know, comments to one of my videos. I'm going to just do, but I'm, I'm using Ivan, but see, he represents, you know, things that other YouTube creators list that, that, that they made. So when I do Ivan, this is what Ivan says. Now he says, abduction list. 
Uh, he says, this is the reasons why he thinks, you know, that, that support an abduction. Now, number one, he says, wrong password on Chris's phone many times, assumably by a third party. Well, okay, I, you know, the many passwords, they can go both ways. I don't really see that supporting one or the other, really. I mean, I, I, I think that Chris... I, I think, and I have a video on this, I, I think Chris, I, I think Lisanne would have known Chris's number. But, you know, maybe she didn't, okay? I think it's most likely she did, but maybe she didn't. Anyway, on the abduction list, you know, number two, Ivan says, deleted photo 509, irretrievable. Deleted it on the computer, according to some investigators. Why would the women bother to delete it if they were lost in the jungle? Now, he said girls here, but they're women. They're not girls. And he says the photo just between day one and day eight. Now, friends, that leaves a, a very thing. You know, I, I wouldn't put this at the highlight of the foul play, but Ivan did. This is interesting. The women, they did not delete any photos their entire trip. Their entire trip, they didn't delete photos. And then... You think that then they delete the photo that's between day one and the nighttime photos? That's kind of odd. And then the computer, it was deleted in a manner that a computer deleted it. It wasn't just deleted off the camera. And if it was just deleted off the camera, a computer should be able to retrieve it. But since a computer can't retrieve it, some people that support the lost theory, they'll just say there's some glitch that shouldn't have happened that did happen. But I, I think, I think you know, it, it was deleted by computer. So yes, the the women who were lost in the forest, they didn't have a computer with them. So it was foul, you know, that, that points to foul play. So, and just remember, they didn't delete any photo, you know, be, you know that this was they didn't delete a photo. You know any photo so why would they delete this one it, it, it's very interesting so ivan says in point three supporting the abduction theory the foul play theory he says the stuff and the small amount of body parts scattered over the large area and the body parts in the different stages of decomposition okay that is a big one that's one I made a video about the elephant in the room, and this is one of the elephants in the room that people with the lost theory can't get around. You have a pelvic bone that is, I mean, it, it, it's bleached. A bleached pelvic bone. No no bone marrow on, on it. No blood. No, I mean, it's a bleach, and it's not some bleached either. You have a bleached pelvic bone, and then you have... A rolled up skin that's not that decayed. You have a you, you have all these bones. You, you have some of these bones have flesh on them. I mean, you have this different levels of decomposition. It's not going to happen if these women died relatively in the same time frame. Okay, this this is like foul play. It's a huge thing that points to foul play. I mean, you you have a bleached pelvic bone. And then you have a rolled up skin that's not that decomposed. And then you had the foot that's broken. You have bones that still have flat bone marrow on them. And you're telling me that these women died about the same time? You're telling me that this all just happened naturally? I mean, no offense, but what are you drinking? I mean, come on. That, that did not happen naturally. So, he says, number four, the backpack in good condition and the electronic objects not damaged by the water. Okay, well, that's that's a good point. Number five, according to the women who found the backpack, it wasn't there the previous day. Okay, that that's that's another good point. That you know, the woman who found the backpack, she says it wasn't there for a long time. It wasn't there the previous day. Someone put it there. Now, could it like naturally have like moved from where it was? Yeah, it, it could have, but it's just odd that this backpack, you know wasn't found before when it was because this area is not a real isolated area if this backpack had been out in the wild it, it, it would have been found before it was so his number five ivan says number five according to the woman who found the backpack it wasn't there the previous day i just went over that now ivan says number six multiple fingerprints on the camera not investigated by the police 
Now, this is something that people overlook a lot. There is, now, if I get this number wrong, I'm sorry, okay, but I think there are something like 31 or 32 different fingerprints on Chris and Lisanne's stuff. And they never cross check these fingerprints. You can't say that there's someone, that there's no evidence of foul play when there's over 30 fingerprints on their material and you don't do fingerprint cross checks. You don't go and see who those fingerprints are. You don't investigate it. That's like saying, well, I don't think there's an ice cream shop in my town without actually going to Google to see if there is an ice cream shop in your town. I mean, you have fingerprints. You don't cross check. You don't investigate those. And then you say, well, there's no reason to believe foul play. Well, you didn't investigate the fingerprints. Of course, there's reason for foul play. So you know, that's a pet peeve of mine. I'm passionate about that. OK, and then, you know, Ivan L. Now, Ivan, I'm not putting you on the bus. I'm just going by what you're saying. He says, number seven. The suspicious guide who wanted to take them on that trip but was refused by the victims was later the first one who found the, their remains. I have a, there's a lot about Feliciano, and he is. He's not officially a suspect, but do a lot of people think he's suspicious? Yes, they do. And number eight, am I going to go into it? And, you know, Ivan said the dog came back alone. Ivan Azul, the blue, the dog came back alone. I'm not even going to go over the dog. That's a red herring. That Let's keep our eyes on the what what matters. The dog, his presence, doesn't really matter that much. I'm saying that and I'm wearing a dog t-shirt, okay? I'm trying to be unbiased here, but Azul, was he there? Was he not there? That doesn't really matter, okay? Say he was going. Then, then he ran into someone that he knew would give him a treat, so he started walking with it. His, it doesn't really matter. Now, this is what I wanted to get to. Ivan, he has, I just went over his theory, his evidence, things that he thought pointed to the abduction theory. And now he goes with these things point to the lost theory. And now, number one, he says, set above. Now, I'm not sure what he really means by the set above, but anyway. Number two, he says no physical evidence of a third party. Well, you think those remains are natural? You, I mean, you, you, you just mentioned that there's all those fingerprints and they didn't investigate those fingerprints, but now you're, you're saying that there's no physical evidence of a third party? You yourself just said that that photo was deleted and you, know, you probably needed a computer to delete it in the way it was and there's no evidence of a third party? Really? See, it, it doesn't add up. That, that's a flaw on that theory, okay? Yes, there is evidence of a third party. Now, number three with the lost theory that Ivan wrote. Ivan, again, I'm saying this, I, I, I'm, res I'm, trying, I'm respecting you, okay? And I... I I hope you see this as respect by going over your post. Ivan says, maybe Froon, Lisanne Froon, tried to use Chris's phone to leave the last message, but it's debatable would she have sacrificed batteries so many times for that instead of calling SOS a few times more, but due to psychic trauma she must have had after so many days lost in the jungle, she just could not remember the password if Chris ever had told her at all. So. Okay, so you're using the, the failed PIN number attempts as your abduction theory, but then you're using that as your loss theory too. Yeah, you, you kind of need to either leave that out or have really good reason to put that in either one. You're better to leave that out, okay? Because, you know, with the so many attempts, the, the, you know, there's so many seven attempts to get past the PIN, First of all, would Lisanne really want to do that? Because you don't need to do that to make an emergency phone call. She wanted to get into the phone. Well, well, why would you want to get into the phone? Perhaps to see if a picture was taken that you wouldn't want to be there, maybe? So who would really want to get into that phone? Well, I think an abductor would to make sure there was no evidence. However, I, I can also see maybe Lisanne, possibly, you know, she would... 
some you know sometimes you would want to get into a phone because I I've been in situations where I sent a text and the signal wasn't there, but then like an hour later the the text did go through because it was you know the signal was working on it. Maybe the same wanted to leave a text and just hope that it would get through eventually. I don't know. I I would just leave those seventy seven attempts. I it, 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 both theories, you know. It, it, it doesn't make or break either theory. Ivan then says, and, and his fourth reason for you know the lost theory, some things on that night photos, like the use of flashlight, some things on the night photos, like the use of flashlight, structures made of branch and plastic, toilet paper, and the mirror indicate that they, or most likely one of them, maybe tried to lighten the way, send signals, and leave something to orient, orientate, which would not be the case if they had been kidnapped. Okay, so you're using the nighttime photos as a way to, say, you know, say that they weren't kidnapped. But in your opinion, you think the nighttime photos are evidence that they got lost. Well, first of all, I don't do too much with the photographic evidence because it's pretty shaky, and I have enough question marks. I, I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't think Panama. I, I, I question whether Panama. You know, how much did they distort, distort the images before they gave it to the Dutch investigators? I'm not. You know, I, I, I think there's stuff that went on there, and I think in these photos you can tell they're not very high quality. Those photos, those nighttime float photos. To me, they seem like someone that's like, well, we want to go and we want people to believe that the women were lost out here. So we're just going to take a bunch of random photos, you know, like 90 photos or something over three hours. But most of those photos were within the first hour and a half to two hours. So they were just randomly taking photographs. There's, I mean, it, it, to, to me, that's someone that's trying to make people believe they were there. Okay. I'm. In those photos, is there anything that suggests that they were lost and not foul play? I mean, that SOS picture, when I see that SOS picture, I, I, now first of all, if there was an SOS picture or not, it doesn't prove anything. Because, I mean, could someone say, well, see, if you kidnap them, and then you wanted people to believe that they were serious, that they were lost, could you not make an SOS thing and then... You know, yeah, you, you try to deceive people. Yes, you could. However, you know, with the toilet paper, I just or or with whatever they with, with, with the paper they use, I don't see an SOS symbol. Okay, I see random photographs. Those nighttime pictures. I think. I mean, the the, the back of Chris's head. The the quality of the picture is not very good on those pic. On, on, on those photographs, but those photographs, they, they don't point either way. I mean, to me, th th there's, they're just random pictures that are being taken, oh, taken, okay? I think it's people that abducted Chris and Lisa Ann, and they wanted to make people believe that they were right there on the, on the 8th. To me, that, that's foul play, especially when you had a picture of Chris's head. So I don't see how you can use the, the photographs, you know, for the lost theory. But anyway, you know, Ivan, he concludes, we'll probably never know the truth. That's what makes this case so creepy and interesting. Well, see, he, he had his reasons for the abduction. He had his reasons for the loss. And then he said, well, we'll, we'll probably never know the truth. See, he, re, he retreated back to that position. And if you go over his points, that foul play theory makes so much more sense. And this was my, my reply to Ivan. I said, thank you for your feedback. I read through your comments carefully. If I just take what you wrote, in my mind, there's little doubt of foul play. Number three in your list for the abduction theory seals it. I don't think one can reasonably get past the decomposi decomposition evidence. And then I also say not to be argumentative because I want your feedback, but we can't say number two is correct, the loss theory, remember no evidence of a third party, if we 
take seriously number six in your adduction theory, all the fingerprints on the camera in the bag. They never ruled those fingerprints out. There can't be a bunch of unchecked fingerprints and then say there's no evidence for a third person. Of course there's no evidence if they don't pursue the clues. So I wanted to go over this. I know this is a longer video, and I'm sorry I, I, I didn't know how else to do it. And I, I, I tried to go over this. I tried to make this video like 12, 13 times. That's why my voice is going out. So this is going to be it, you know, this time, even with all the mistakes in it. Friends, there's nothing on this that points to the loss that can't be explained with the foul play. Okay, whether you take the nighttime photographs, whether you take the login attempts, the 77 failed login attempts, but then there are certain things in the foul play theory that you cannot explain if you had the loss theory. And number one, you can't explain why there is a bleached pelvic bone, and then there's also skin, and then there's actually bone that has bone marrow and flesh still attached to it. And then just say, oh yeah, they, they probably died in the about same time period. Really? If they died in the same time period, then there was foul play with their bones. How can we say anything else? And back again, I'm, let's be realistic. If someone's lost, if you are lost and you're going to panic, are you going to call 911 or, or uh, yeah, uh, the, the emergency numbers? Are you going to call them a lot on day one and day two or day three? Or are you going to wait till day eight? If you're lost, you're going to try to call a lot more than Lisa Ann Frone or Chris Kramers did. The log phone, the phone data, I, it just makes no sense whatsoever. So friends, and if I'm missing something, please tell me, but there's nothing in the lost theory that can't. So I don't, people need to have the gumption to say, to rule out this lost theory, to say, you know what, I, that there's a chance it might have happened, but this is pretty strong evidence for foul play. Anyway, thank you for listening. Sorry this was a longer video. God bless you.